Stop this move! What's the situation here? Like, has Obama been here already, or? Obama and Joe Biden are already inside speaking, yes. Obviously, great numbers of Pennsylvanians are here rallying to tell the president, and fracking. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. My name is Alex. Uh, I, I helped get you know arrangements yeah, to be at this Woo! this location. Uh, but Upper Pike County. And Alex! Thanks. Uh, I would like to call up first anyone who feels that they'd like to speak about being impacted with uh, drinking water. I see a few folks out there um, to talk about Dimmick, about how, why we're here today. Why Dimmick people are inside today? Who would like to speak about that? Alex, oh, this is John Trello. John Trello is from Sonstown, Pennsylvania. I at one point had to deliver water to his house that we raised in my elementary school on recently I'm uh, in the last on. year. And, uh, How you doing? John's a nice champ. Me. He's been taking on the, the drillers in his community by uh, speaking out, and he's a great, awesome guitar player. Uh, wow. so it's a shame he doesn't have it today. But here's John. I have been affected by, uh, my water has been affected by this industry. My family has been on bottled water now for almost two and a half years. Of course, we're outside of the 2,500 foot limit, so we have no case. That's just the way we have to live right now. My problem with this, more than anything else, is what this is doing to our democracy, what this is doing to our sense of community, our civil rights, this is far beyond, far beyond an environmental issue. This is, in fact, a democracy issue. It's a constitutional rights issue. It's a property rights issue. This cannot be allowed to continue. We are, we are citizens. We're not subjects of these corporations. I do not want my children and my grandchildren to be raised in an industrial zone against their will. I'm originally from Philadelphia. I moved to Northeast Pennsylvania to get away from this stuff. I don't want to live near this. I didn't come up here to get rich. I didn't come up here to lease my land. I didn't come up here to collect royalties. I came up here to live my life like a human being in a clean, pristine environment that I just wanted to perform music and write music till I die. That's about it. Um, I don't understand what is going on with our government. I'm not, sure we, I'm not sure we have a government anymore. We have a corporocracy. Corporatocracy. It's a corporatocracy. This man said it right here. And that's exactly what it is. I don't care Democrats, Republicans, doesn't matter because the corporations own them both. The only difference between the two is the smell. That's about it. We, what we need to do is we need to take to the streets. We need to look back on every change that is that has ever taken place in history. Every bit of social change, whether it was civil rights, slavery, women's rights, children's rights, nothing changed until the people came out and took to the streets and said, we're not going to tolerate this any longer. That's where I'm at right now. Thank you very much. What's your name? John Crowell. Thank you. All right. Uh, I would like to invite uh, someone who's been to the other rallies that happened in New York State along Obama's tour. Uh, can someone report back to us as a group? Some of us been, haven't been out in New York State. Okay. All right. Julia's going to talk about the, the situation in Dimmick, Pennsylvania. This is Julia Wallace, everybody, from Frack Action. <laughs> I just wanted to give everybody an update about what's going on in Denver, Pennsylvania. So, recently, just a few weeks ago, we found out in the 
LA Times that there is an EPA whistleblower in Philadelphia in the Region 3 office who leaked the PowerPoint presentation that was delivered to high-level EPA officials, including, it seems like, Lisa Jackson, who was EPA administrator at the time. And that PowerPoint showed that there was methane and different co chemical compounds in the water in Dimmick, Pennsylvania. That the EPA's water tests that were done at that time showed that there was cause for concern and that the investigation should have continued. Now what happened was, at that point, the high-level officials told the EPA investigators in the Region 3 office that, that, that they were closing the case, even though contamination results were presented. Those people went and had to tell all the families in Dimmick that their water was safe to drink. But as you'll see in Gasland 2, Scott Ely says, and many people that we've talked to in Dimmick, that even though a Region 3 EPA official said to them, officially we are here to tell you that your water is safe to drink and that the water deliveries are now being discontinued by the federal government, they said under their breath, don't drink your water. So what this means right now is that President Obama has found himself in a situation where his administration is covering up fracking water contamination. This is the first time that we have caught them red-handed. And we've caught them red-handed because the EPA whistleblower, an actual staff member of the EPA, gave that information to the press. So what we're doing now is we are basically collecting petitions and calling on President Obama and the new EPA administrator, Gina McCarthy, to reopen that investigation. Similarly, in Texas and in Wyoming, the cases were shut down in the same fashion, very quickly, abruptly, coincidentally right before the presidential uh, election campaign. So right now, we just need everyone to sign the petition. Last two weeks ago, uh, 50,000 petitions were delivered to Gina McCarthy's office, Craig and Ray, literally went from here to the press conference in Scranton and right outside of Philadelphia's EPA office and then down to Washington, D.C., where they stood and they waited with 30 Homeland Security surrounding them until the EPA came out and collected the petitions from them. And they spoke to them for a half an hour and they were surrounded by the press. So this is getting more and more notice and it's just going to continue to keep building and more and more people learn. One of the most interesting things that happened to them along that trip was that when they were in the EPA Region 3 office in Philadelphia, an EPA staffer was hiding behind one of the, um, the, uh, what is it? No, the pillars. One of the pillars and pulled right aside and said, there's a lot of people in here that are paying attention and we know what's going on. But he didn't want to be seen with Ray or he doesn't want to come out you know, publicly because people are afraid to lose their job. So we have to do everything we can to keep raising our voices so that more and more EPA whistleblowers come out, so that more and more people speak out and that eventually they have to pay attention to this situation. Because right now, President Obama is looking at a horrible legacy for himself in poisoning the American people, exacerbating climate change, and fracking America. So we have to do everything we can right now. Just like they told us when we were in New York that it could not be stopped, that it wasn't inevitable. Three years ago, they were saying that to us. We have stopped because of the will of all the people across New York. And our will is what will stop President Obama from continuing what he's doing. The answer is renewable energy. It's an answer that people can rally around. It's a jobs message. There are so many jobs that can be created for renewable energy. And that's what President Obama, that's what the Democratic Party needs to understand that they need to embrace. Not fracking and poisoning the American people. Thanks.
My name is Jerry Kane. I live in a little town called Westboro, Pennsylvania. I'm about 20 miles, I think, west of Dimmit. I live on the top of a mountain. We were very impacted by the first well that went in our land in 2000, and up the road from us in 2009. Our water came very contaminated. Uh, we now have seven well pads around us within probably a two mile circle at the most. Um, they're going to put, I think there'll be 13 by the time they're done. Um, contamination does not know where the boundary lines are on your land. We did not ask for this, but where we sit on the top of the mountain, it's, we receive the full plume that come up in the aquifer. We have drilling flow back in our water. We have MABSs, which is a foaming agent. We were asked by EPA and Region 3, Robert Halverston, I believe his name is, um, how this got in our well. They couldn't tell us what it was because it's secrets of the drilling component. We were condemned three years, it would be three years this year that we were condemned. We are not to drink, bathe, ingest this water, give it to animals, or irrigate. This was our life. It may only be a little 12 acres, as I was told, and we're just a little puddle. We don't matter much. We, they would not bring us water because they could not set it on fire. It is only radioactive. So the end result is, is that I watch all these children go to our backwoods school, Elk Lake School. They were bringing them water for a couple years, but because this was deemed by our federal government as natural in the ground, these children are forced daily when they go to school to drink this water and to shower in it. But who gave anybody the right to decide what children could be killed? To me, this is a genocide and this is a long term. And the reason I speak out was in 1957, I became a victim of water poisoning. It's what they've seen in my children and grandchildren now. I don't wish this on any of you. This is devastating and the long term effects are going to be enormous. Obama health care, you're going to need it because we need somebody to take care of the children in Pennsylvania now. And I think for some it's too late. There have been lawsuits with a baby over heavy metal. This is not going to slow down and it's not going to end. There's got to be a way to help the children of Pennsylvania. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. This was drawn on eight this is from 8-19-2013, August, August 19th, Does so that was four days ago. We have to change our filters once a week. That's not going to filter your air. No, but it, if we don't do that, we have no water in the house. We would to use the water for like. You Thank you, Jerry. In it, right? How do you shower? We still have Does to bathe. Does anyone still support fracking? We still fracking? have to bathe. No. I don't oh, care what they say. that water to bathe in? We stood here for, well, the whole line went in the event, and we told everybody, if you get a, if you get a handshake with President Obama, you better ask him about Dimmick Water and what he's going to do with the EPA study, and how he's going to take care of all these folks who are, who are uh, in impact. So we handed out flyers, we asked everyone to hand it to him, and our people went inside with those, and hopefully we'll hear back that, that he did respond or something. We have no, res we get no respect. He, you know, he's, he says this. In, uh, in his first campaign that when we get upset we cling to our guns and our Bibles and that was his only comment about rural Pennsylvania as far as I know and he comes to Scranton to eat lunch with Biden and enjoy himself here but he really needs to sit down and listen to what we have to say and ask our permission for some of these things and I guarantee you people want their tourism their recreation their traditional rural heritage businesses in Northeast Pennsylvania in the endless mountains and the Poconos. That's what people move here for. That's what we sell. We sell the scenery. We enjoy it. We live here for a reason. It's not easy to live in Northeast Pennsylvania. This region has the highest unemployment rate in the state. It's a difficult way to live. You know, I've been a landscaper the last two years. So it's it's a tough it's a tough life around here. You know, gas drilling. We're still the high, my, my Pike County is still the highest unemployment in the state. We have. We have pipeline construction. Two pipelines were built in the last two years. We still have the highest unemployment in the state. So, who wants to talk? When you burn the, the methane gas that travels through a pipeline, the components they have along the line dehydrator stations. There's one in Dallas. Who's from uh, Who's from Dallas area? Dallas, Luzerne County. Anyone Luzerne County? 
Down in Luzerne County, there's a dehydrator for the Transco pipeline, and they separate all the liquids out that are still in the line. When they burn it in the compressor to run the, the facility, it goes into the air. So that's a normal result of the process. Yeah. When you burn the gas that's coming out of the shale today, like they want to build a power plant in Jessup, they, they announce. Just throw it here on the left one. One in Ithaca. They have one permitted in, in Bradford County now. So that's not going to happen once. That's going to happen once. Yeah, the power plants and compressor stations, the dehydrators and the separators along the pipelines, and they're all going to burn gas 24-7 because they're infrastructure they have to. And they're applying for LNG terminals. Who's from New York here? Who wants to talk about an LNG terminal? What's an LNG terminal? LNG, liquid natural gas. We'll get up here and talk. All right, Obama's liquefied natural gas. That's how they ship it. They cool it down with big refrigerators, and they put it on a boat in a liquid form, and they ship it to countries that we have free trade agreements with all the time. It's, it's, it's liquefied all the time in these LNG ports across the East Coast and the Gulf. Our problem is they want to build even new ones, okay? And Obama has been permitting, I mean, we have a lot of problems with it, but we, he's permitting with the Department of Energy all the time, he's considering these proposals to ship it not only to states we have free trade agreements with, but to unfriendly states, including China, right? So people who think this is energy independent, and I don't mean to raise hell, you know, about you know China, but we have, you know, this is an energy source. People even use that talking point with us today. Well, if he's gonna ship it overseas, Burn it in a, in a, you know, in a power plant in New York City, that's not helping us, and we pay for all the costs. Just like coal, when coal was mined here with the anthracite region, in 1900, the coal miners in Northeast Pennsylvania, 90,000 of them went on strike in a single day, on the first day of the strike. By the end of one week, it was 110,000 strikers. And the guy who's a statue down here in Cornell Square is John Mitchell, was the president of the United Mine Workers. And he said, we're not, J.P. Morgan was the, was the guy who owned the mines around here. He owned, the, he owned all the anthracite mines. And the anthracite was used in people's homes to heat their homes. So the argument was the miners don't want people to have heat in their homes in New York City. Well, what do they say now? We don't want to have heat, heat in their homes in New York City because we don't want drilling. Well, there's ways to make energy efficient heating and solar heating and passive solar heating. I built, I worked in the trades. I know there are efficient ways to construct buildings. And if people from the cities want to come out here and create us, turn us into energy colonies, maybe they should start thinking about how to make it efficient, or maybe there shouldn't be cities, you know? But I mean, maybe we need to think about smart growth. If that means if Northeast Pennsylvania has to be destroyed like it was 100 years ago with coal, you know, I'm not willing to repeat that. And the miners fought back, and there were deaths, thousands of miners were killed in this region by the coal and iron police, okay? That was, that was a deputized by the state of Pennsylvania. You know, we're reliving that. My, my town contracted their police forces pipeline security recently. Okay, it's it's it, they're they're technically still our police, but they they police the pipeline construction. So, so you, there you go. You know, we're reliving this history, and Northeast Pennsylvanians know it. We know, we know exactly what's going on. So, who else wants to speak? My name is Jerome. I'm from Northern New Jersey. I'm with a group that's called the Franciscan Response to Fracking. We've been active for two years. Right now we're planning a regional screening of Gasland 2. That's one of our activities. Uh, now, I'll just uh, suggest that from a spiritual or a, you know, a religious standpoint that we need to be respecting, we need to be respecting the environment uh, and being protective of our health and safety. And I'll leave it at that for now. God bless you all. Amen. Amen.
fracking, yes we can. Ban fracking, yes we can. When we were on the frack sites, okay, we had the silicon sand blowing right over us and everything else. We didn't have any protection. We didn't have any masks, right? Yeah, no. We said out there with t-shirts, right. man. Yeah. yeah. We yeah, were at a frack site, you get back in the trucks, you'd have a half inch of silicon sand across the whole hood of the truck. Yeah. Yeah. We would blow over us, we're breathing it, you know? Yeah. So, Ray, I couldn't help but notice that you have in your breast yeah. pocket there a re remarks from President Obama. So you got in to listen to President Obama at Lackawanna College here yep. in in uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I did. And uh, how was it? How did it go? Well, I guess it's fine if you're good for college education, yeah. but I mean, uh, we're, I, I was hoping to get close enough where I could hand him my letter that we mailed to him. What's in the letter? It's the letter that we did. It was hand delivered to him by uh, the mayor. Uh huh. We sent it to him. The but mayor. I, Mayor Ryan. Hey, Mayor, Mayor, okay. From Matt. Binghamton. Yes. But we wrote this letter, okay, to him. The EPA got terribly upset when they realized that I did this invitation to the president and McCarthy's office, their scheduler, contacted us and wanted to know why I did not invite her. Wow. So we rewrote the letter and sent it to McCarthy's office of EPA. Wow. It's basically it's an invite to the president to come to Northeast Pennsylvania, Demick Susquehanna County, to see what it's like to live in a gas field. With the contamination and want them to see the water and everything else. Uh, it's not to protest or anything. I want him to understand what it's really like to live in a gas field. Sure. With a rig 500 feet from my house that's been there for seven months. Oh and to reopen the EPA investigation for Demick Pennsylvania, Wyoming, and Texas that was shut off. Yes. So, Very good. Basically, want him to come back. Is your water his contaminated? Job. Yes. In your house? Yes. Uh huh. And yeah. undrinkable. Right. There's a jug of water around here somewhere in my water. Uh huh. Um, but that, that's what the letter is. It basically, breaks it all down. It's an invite, and not to have a hundred protesters there. Sure. <clears throat> you know, attacking them or anything. This, right. It, I wanted a private. We were hoping to divert them. Sure. And just have them. We were on the run of water and want him to see what the water looks like coming out of the well for himself sure. and see what it's like living in a gas field. What do you think about sending him a gallon of it and saying, this came from my home and... No, the lawyer won't let me do that. No? No. It, it's after the two wells, they... It's after the illegal two the well, to poison a president, I yeah. guess. <laughs> but same way uh, different people say, well, I'll drink it. The lawyer goes, absolutely not. He goes, you have the test results, you know it's poison, you know it's contaminated, you let anybody drink that and they die, he goes, you're going to jail for murder. Sure. He goes, you are responsible. I go, well, they're going to sign a waiver. He goes, no, absolutely. You, anybody touches or drinks your water, or we'll turn around, take that, and we'll take it away from you. Uh, and they go, well, we'll take it away. So, so, but nobody's arresting anybody from the drillers, the drilling company that actually punched a hole somewhere in somebody's aquifer to get your water to actually no. be toxic. No, nope. They get to walk away. Right. But you'd go to jail if you sent some of That's this right. to, say, President yep. Obama just to show him what yep. it's like. Oh, yeah. Golly. So, yeah. isn't that something? Well, I don't know. I Thanks. You know, yeah, I, not I a problem. Okay.